Hola, soy Sofía Vergara, and you're watching Voice Mr. Robot on USA Network. JK, this is me, Pedro, and today is episode 8, recap of Who is Mr. Robot. Let's get it started. Now, this episode was a long in dialogue again. Just, let's, let's look. I thought last week's was long. No, no, no. <laughs> so this is episode 8, 1.7, White Rose. And as with every episode now, I'm kind of paying a little more attention to it in the sense of they recap previous episodes in the way that, I guess, like I said, little Easter eggs and stuff that pop up in other episodes. So it's like, the Dark Army talk with Mr. Robot and Darlene. So it was kind of like, we need, like, the Dark Army and stuff. And then Darlene, when she was getting mad because the Dark Army pulled out. And then Elliot had to, like, coax her out of, like, not going through with the plan. And then that was kind of like a little, like, Easter egg, like they say, for this episode as well. But then also kind of, like, shows how everyone intertwines together. And how, kind of my theory from the beginning of how everything comes back to Elliot was true. And then... The White Rose drama in the meeting, you know, in the previous episodes where she was at Malala at the college and stuff, and the guy's like, well, the meeting's on, I don't know, but be safe, even though I know you won't. And then Gideon and the server from the first episode, server CS30, that got infected when Elliot first found the F Society in there, and then Angela and Ollie, you know, like, oh, why, why do you have my tag and stuff like that, and then when he meets the hacker, and then the CTO event, where Tyrell was there and he told the wife to, like, meet him, but then he killed her, so that was that. So then this episode opens up with Darlene and she's like with some suitor guy in like some apartment or suite or penthouse or whatever. And it's basically like her hookup basically for that night, I guess, and whatever. And they're talking out on the balcony and then she's just like, what if everything just like, you know, went away and stuff. And then he's kind of like a zombie apocalypse or whatever. And then low key, it's like she meets like the revolution and stuff like, I guess, like, you know, like opulence, you know, sort of. What if that all went away and everyone was kind of equal but low-key? Is that really the plan that they're going with F Society with that distribution of money and everything like that? We really don't know. And she's like, it's just the rich and the poor. Like, she's like, there's really no, like, middle class, you know? And I feel like this kind of really does reflect society now in a way because we kind of do hear even, like, in political campaigns and stuff like that, how it's like, oh, we just have the rich and the poor and it's only getting, like, bigger, like, the gap between them and we need a stronger middle class and stuff like that. So it is kind of true how big, I guess, the divide is. Now, is it really true or is it the media? Is it what we see? I mean, I guess it all depends on how you look at it. And then she's like, oh, she's like, is one spreadsheet solves the world's problems, you know, because her hookup and that guy is kind of like, I guess, like some kind of like businessman, like Tyrell in a way. And then he's just like, well, it's me and the government. And he's like, well, how good of a job is the government doing, you know? And then he's just like, you know, he's like, you can just whatever, you know? And she says, why can't the world just take care of itself and stuff? And he's like, well, people are stupid, you know? And then, well, I mean, we are killing the planet. And then he's like, I'm paid to be smart. But then it's like, are you paid to be smart? Or, I don't know, I felt like that was low-key shading, like, in the House of Representatives and Senators, you know? Because it's like, oh, they're really smart and stuff, but then they get paid so much and they have so much benefits. You're like, I don't know. I feel like the show low-key, like, throws a lot of shade at society. And everything like that. And then she's just like, well, she's like, whatever, you know, like, rich and poor, blah, blah, blah. And then he's like, well, there's you. He's like, and you're surviving and stuff, like, you're like, but he doesn't, like, say, like, she's a middle class. Like, she's like, you're somewhere in the middle because you're surviving, even though you're not rich, but you're not poor, you know? He's like, you're just, I guess, hanging in there in a way, but it's kind of just, like, an odd statement in a way. And then he leaves and stuff, and she's looking around for, like, the safe and stuff like that, and she basically, like, hacks it to get a gun to protect herself and stuff. And then it's kind of funny, because, like, she looked at, like, his diploma or something, and, like, that was his password and way for it. And she was just like, oh. So she did that. And then she goes to ballet, and I was like, is this, like, Taylor Swift, Shake It Off reference? Like, Taylor Swift is Evil Corp or something? And it's kind of weird, because she was with Angela, and then I thought, like, I felt like I overlooked this because how I said how everything comes back to Elliot in a way, but then I, like, I never, well, I, 
it was a big drop at the end of the episode, but I was just like, how is Darlene with Angela, you know? Because it's like, you never really saw, like, a connection between Darlene and Angela. So I was just kind of like, this is odd. And then they're, like, in a ballet class, and Ollie is calling Angela, and she's like, well, I don't care, blah, 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 you know, whatever. And then she's like, oh, I hope you're done with him. And she's basically like, I am, you know, like, whatever. But then Darlene is wearing black, and Angela's wearing white. I'm like, is this, like, a black swan reference as well? Like, is Darlene gonna go white and angela being like the white swan going to become the black swan because remember she was taking those drugs and stuff like that but then i don't know she's having her own little trip because she's the one who went to go plant the virus at all safe and stuff like that using her boyfriend's card and computer and stuff so it's kind of like she's being a little mischievous or so so like i said this was also foreshadowing how they know elliot you know like that and stuff like that and i was just like hmm I was like, well, Angela is, like, Elliot's friend, and, like, Darlene is just someone from F Society. That's kind of, like, how we saw it in the beginning of the episode, you know? So it's kind of like we never really got to know the members of F Society. And I know they say in the next season that we'll get to see more backstory out of everyone, and, like, this first season is just, like, basically, like, introduction to, like, I guess the plot and stuff. Like, the first episode is just, like, setting it up, you know? But it's very, like, in-depth and stuff like that. So it's very weird in that sense. And then we go to Elliot staring at a picture again. And then he's like, oh, I hurt Krista and stuff. But and that's his therapist. And he's like, but she's too afraid to look over a wall and see. And, st like... And he comes back to that at, at another point in the episode. And it's kind of like, you can't see over the wall. And I guess the only thing I can think, like, historically is, like, the Berlin Wall. You know, like, you can't look over it. Or the Great Wall of China or something like that. Or I guess the walls at Auschwitz. I don't know. And stuff like that. And then he files Krista away, you know, like how he does diddle, the diddly, but he burns them on a disc and he writes it, you know. And he does that, so he files Krista away after, because, you know, in the previous episode he told her, like, you know, he hacked her and would watch her through his camera and stuff like that. So she was kind of like... And then he just basically, like, looks at people, but when he says that... Low key, we know he hacks people because that's how he like looks at people and stuff like that, you know. Because he's like, Oh, like I look, I look at people and so like I read people, but it's kind of like literally like he's reading people because he finds like files of them online and stuff like all their social media. He hacks into their social networking sites and then he hacks into their emails and stuff like that. So he kind of like really, I guess, knows the people by reading into them, you know. So it's kind of like, I guess, very biographical the way he finds out about people and then. He goes, it's like, oh, did you, like, get everybody back together as he leaves his apartment to Mr. Robot and stuff? And he's kind of like, yeah. And then Darlene's on the train with some dark army people, and she's kind of preparing for the worst, because, you know, it's only her on the train, and she's like, oh, they're following me and stuff. And they kind of come up to her, and she kind of, like, puts her hand in her backpack, like, kind of, like, ready to, like, I guess, pull off a gun, like, just in case, you know? And stuff like that. And then they just tell her, follow proper commands for the sequence to, like, you know, initiate and stuff like that, so... The plan is on for them, again, because as in the previous episode, we saw that they backed out and stuff, but then we find out why they backed out when later on in the episode, which I'll get to. And then Elliot is talking to F Society about the Raspberry Pi that he planted, and we don't remember that was the episode where he was in the bathroom with Tyrell, and he planted that Raspberry Pi behind the thermostat or something like that to kind of like make that plan of like heating up Steel Mountain and blowing it up like that and everything. And... They were like, oh, like, how long were you doing this? You know, Jack Black asked him, he's like, oh, only for, like, four weeks. Like, he wanted to make sure that everything was, like, up to date and, like, I guess regulated and stuff before, like, they meet with White Rose. And White Rose is that mystery character that we don't really know who is until this episode. And this episode was kind of like, oh, huh. well, we saw White Rose. I was just like, hey, Bunch <laughs> And, um, what was, oh, All Safe was hacked. So Elliot has to leave while he's, like, talking to them and Darlene kind of like gives her gun to Elliot and she's like oh like they're following me and stuff and like you're gonna need it and blah 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 and then he's like I doubt like I'm the one they want to talk to but low key like I've been saying all these recaps that somehow everything comes back to Elliot so in a way he is the pawn that is being played in this game and you you really low key like figure it out you know they kind of just like don't really show it but you know Elliot's just being played in all of this like it it's just getting really good each episode and uh, as we near the season finale I'm like I can't and stuff like that and then 
like she said, she's like, you're definitely like the one. And that's when I was like, okay, like this is about Elliot. And then she calls herself from his phone. So they have each other's number. And she says it's like to, pr to protect each other and not really F society because F society's rules, like you're not supposed to have each other's numbers and stuff. Because if you remember one of the episodes, some hackers got caught because they would email each other or something like that. And they would like trace each other. So they kind of like, I guess, made their own like noose. I think that's the word. And, like, if they don't contact each other except personally in person, then there's really no trail to follow besides, like, only if you see them together. And, like, hackers, I guess, it's better for them. Like, Mr. Robot had told them, like, if they just meet in person and, like, they only communicate when they're there. Once they're gone, like, I guess they can do whatever they want. Like that. And then they hug and stuff, which was kind of also like foreshadowing or like alluding to like the beginning of the episode where she was talking to Angela and then like later on in the episode and like a really big like whoa and then she just puts the gun in the popcorn and stuff and then robot tells him to like lose the number and stuff and like she's right and everything but like you don't need another distraction because I mean what's her face um Shayla had just died and stuff and that was already a big distraction to him and everything like it's kind of like revenge in a way or like avenging Shayla but then it is like is his mind a little clear? Is he focused and stuff? We never know. And then Tyrell is walking like crazily into his office and everything. Someone bumps into him and spills coffee and he gets mad. And his assistant says how Gideon wants to meet with him and stuff and talk about like the Angela and the Colby thing like that. How she said that she lied about something and it was kind of like going to get Colby off the hook but kind of like spill the beans about the leukemia stuff. And when he says that he's like oh like there's even a honeypot and that was essentially basically made to like catch the hackers and stuff because it would be like a false server and like anyone who was like in there like thinking that they're actually in the server is not and this is also mentioned again when he meets with white rose elliot and tyro is kind of like oh well i want to look over your research because that honeypot kind of like gets his attention and i was kind of like hmm i was like why does tyro really care and then once um, Gideon leaves because um, that Chinese guy at Alsi tells him to come back. Tyrell tries logging into like the F Society thing and stuff like that. And he sees F Society like tries logging in is like denied, denied, denied. And stuff. he's just like, huh. And then the police are there and stuff because they found a body like upstairs like they say. And obviously it's the CTO's wife that Tyrell killed. And then they want to see him and stuff since like he was there at the reception and everything like that. And then he's like, well, tell them to make an appointment and stuff. And then he's like, send me on my mobile, like, files about, I think, the server and stuff like that. And then we go back and Gideon's back at Allstate. And he doesn't want it, want anything to go public. Like, he doesn't want the public to know that they've been hacked again. Because, obviously, Allstate was hacked in the first episode. Allstate was hacked when Angela called him again. And then, like, as Angela hacked with the Dark Army stuff, which we found out really wasn't a hack in this episode. So it's kind of like... I guess it would be bad for the reputation, like, I guess in such a short amount of time to be getting hacked, and basically by the same person, in a way. But then, like I said, it always comes back to Elliot, because it was F Society, and then it's a dark army, and it was kind of Angela, but then, like, it has nothing to do with them, like, it's always about Elliot, and stuff like that, so he is, like, the little pawn in this game. Um, Elliot is viewing the hack and stuff, and he's just, like, like, I'm gonna, like, reroute the malware or something like that. Or rewrite it. Um, he's like, this is a distraction, like I said. But he's like, for what and stuff. And then Ollie comes over to him and stuff. And Ollie hasn't, like, talked to him basically since, like, the first or second episode. That he kind of, like, patted him on the shoulder. And Ollie was like, because, like, he has that social anxiety thing that he doesn't like to be touched. And he's like, I need you to deliver these servers to basically a white rose, you know. At some random, like this cleaning place but that is the meeting that he's gonna have with the dark army and he he's like very persistent for him to go and he's like it has to be at two and that's kind of foreshadowing the time that the white rose is gonna like kind of give like a little speech about because he's kind of like why don't you ask anyone else like blah 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 and Ali's like oh well everyone's too busy and stuff like that and he's like but you should leave now and then he's kind of like it's barely 12 and he's like Elliot is like, you need to like go, you know, and stuff. But then Ollie, he noticed that Ollie is like sweaty and he's like a little bit nervous and scared at the same time, a little bit anxious and on edge. 
So he's kind of like, I wonder what's really wrong with him. So he hacks into Ollie's email as always to see what it is. And then he sees Angela and stuff like that. And then he's like, why is Angela involved? You know, like he's kind of like wondering, like, what does Angela have to do with this? And then he goes off, I could say. And we see Tyrell and his Russian bride hoe. And then he's like, we couldn't just like blackmail like the CTO's wife and stuff with nudes, like kind of like the Dark Army did to Angela and stuff like that. He's like, but we need another way and stuff like that. And she's like, it's the perfect time. She's like, nobody would want a scandal during their earnings report, you know, because I guess like everybody cares so much about their reputation. And she tells him like, basically don't fuck it up, you know, because like they've gotten so far and everything like that. And then we go, Elliot, he meets with Angela and stuff, and he questions, like, why didn't she tell him anything? Because as he told the therapist in the episode before, he's like, oh, yeah, I hack people. He's like, but I also help people, you know? And when she asks, he's like, I could have helped you and stuff. And she's like, you weren't around and stuff and everything like that. Like, you weren't there, like, for her to ask for help. And it's true because he was never at work. And he was, with F Society, he was doing his morphine withdrawals when he was going to Steel Mountain and stuff like that. So it's kind of like, where have you been? And then when they say, like, in the course of a month or four months, as he said, it's like, oh, it's been a month since I talked to you. Like, it's kind of like the time frame of the series. It's kind of like, oh, like, you haven't been too working well. How's the he fired? <laughs> and then he was basically like, oh, it's like, it's been a rough month. And she's like, well, Shayla's been dead. That's not an excuse, you know, and stuff like that. And she was talking about how she was pressured to infect um, all safe and stuff because the laptop was infected and they were gonna like since they had already stolen all her information basically like they were gonna like threaten to like leak it and stuff if they didn't infect all safe but it really wasn't like to infect all safe it was just like a distraction like Elliot had noticed before and it was about Elliot the whole time you know and like the meeting and stuff like that like everything falling into place like Vera was saying kind of falls into place with Elliot like Angela was when you brought in because they know it's Elliot and stuff like that but then like I would say before why and stuff like that and like I keep saying this episode really dropped the bomb because it's like it's all about Elliot you know like literally the question that is the title of the series is like answered in a way but then at the same time it's like is it really answered because later on in the episode you're kind of still like what so it's like it's an interesting show and I like it I like it. It's very good. And she tells him, like, I want to give up and stuff. And then she's like, we don't really talk and stuff. Like, it's strange. And then he's like, it's always going to be, like, strange and stuff. Because hackers don't really trust people. They don't really talk to people and stuff. And he's like, she'll never really get over that wall. And, like, low-key, she knows she won't be able to. Because, like, he's self-medicating he has that social anxiety and he's kind of a bit schizophrenic or like delusional or whatever but then they know that they try but at the end of the day they know like they won't get through to elliot and stuff like that so it's kind of like hmm and then the dark army also has trust issues which is why they did what they did to make sure the meeting goes according to schedule and when i say schedule it's not according to plan because f society has a plan and god laughs at Mr. Robot's plan. And when I say schedule, it refers back to the time reference when Ollie told Elliot, you have to be there at two, no later. And White Rose sort of mentions time in a way, which kind of like paranoids. And then it's like, is White Rose like a paranoid person? You know, like, is White Rose such a legend, but also paranoid and stuff like that? And then he goes into the Faraday cage. And that's basically a room where like, there's no signal or interference or way to hack basically anything like it's a dead zone you know and it's kind of on purpose i guess to like protect white rose and the dark army and then also loki kind of protect f society and elliot in a way like no one can get in and no one can get out you know and um when white rose comes out i was just like um caitlin jenner because i couldn't tell white rose was like a man or a girl low-key or like transgender so i was like hmm. I was like, well, the show really keeps bringing it up a little. And then White Rose tells them that they only have three minutes and don't dwell on the past, which is the evil core pack. And she's, Elliot tells White Rose, like, you pulled out. Like, you know, the Dark Army, like, didn't do their part. Like, we did our part and stuff like that. And it's just like, 
you know, it's like, don't tell me what I know. And that's what Rose told Elliot, like, you dwell too much, you say wait too much. Like, you, you're not basically communicating, like, a plan or anything. And then, finally communicates a plan to White Rose to do the hack. And White Rose tells him that you failed, which is why they pulled out. Because Elliot wasn't, like, focused and stuff. And I was thinking, like, is that, like, alluding to the withdrawals and stuff when... Um, Cosby was like, we have to do it without Elliot. Like, Elliot's just, like, withdrawals and stuff. Like, it's not focused and stuff. And remember, Elliot, before that one trippy episode, was like, no, I just need one hit just to be focused, like, just to do this. But then I guess low-key the Dark Army knew that Elliot wasn't going to be able to do it all still in morphine. Like, Mr. Robot tried to get him off the morphine. And then they're saying how Gideon and Colby stuff was, like, kind of suspicious and stuff. And they hacked to basically discover the honeypot. And... In the infected server and they needed to like manage time and stuff and Elliot was like well I can remove it and White Rose is kind of like well how could you remove it if you like you didn't even know about it and stuff and Elliot's kind of like well I can and stuff and then it's people and time for a reason because Elliot's I guess sort of weakness in a way is sort of people and White Rose's weakness is time because White Rose is like I'm on schedule and I have a timeline and stuff and I have like 17 important things to do and we only have three minutes and no more and every beep is a minute that passes by so like you better make use of your time with me you know like if you want answers and it's kind of weird in that way and then white rose tells elia that you have 50 hours and 23 minutes to initiate the hack basically and that's in all parties already and again with the time white rose says like i don't have that much time in the sense of like there's rarely people that i'll see twice and you are one of them that i will not be seeing like twice so basically telling Elliot like this is it this is the only time we're gonna talk and you told what you wanted to tell like she supposes and stuff like that and it's kind of just like when she says that Elliot's kind of like why us like why are you why are you deciding to work with F society and stuff like that and everything and like why are you choosing to help why are you choosing to do this because they're like a powerful Chinese hacker group and then they're just like I guess like an amateur like group that just banded together like by this crazy man Mr. Robot and stuff like the revolutionary and it's kind of just like why us but White Rose doesn't give an answer and White Rose just like walks away and stuff like that so it's very like what is like the dark army's part in this like is there something for more parts and stuff like that but I don't know then Elliot walks out and Elliot's kind of paranoid because of the time frame and stuff that White Rose gave him and the sense of like you have this time you have that time stuff like that and you're running from deadline to deadline and blah 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 and stuff and Elliot's kind of like when he walks out he's like oh god like only 50 hours and 23 minutes but now it's like 50 hours and 17 minutes because I just like lost time walking out of there and stuff like that and then Gideon has been spying on him and stuff and like he needs his phone to like get the honeypot removed and stuff like that and everything and um he needs to observe and think calmly like us the friend or just regular people who like aren't I guess dealing with this and stuff like that and then kind of slows down to see and like he asks like do we know more than he would he's like that wouldn't be fair you know because like we're just something in his mind and stuff like that and he kind of like needs a distraction to get Gideon's phone so he calls Darlene and like says like basically like you need to do this for me so like I can do this and do that you know like the dark army stuff is still up and he's like I just want to arrive to a conclusion you know like why can't it be like any normal person in a way sort of and he sends the green light for F Society hack to hack all safe again. And this time they hack through the TV. So they kind of like send like that propaganda, I guess, video. Like I, it reminds me kind of like a mocking Jay in a way. And they send one of those into the group meeting room. Because, you know, they could have done it on all the TVs. Or they could have done it like when they saw Colby being arrested and stuff. And Angela and Elliot with her. But no, they did it, like, I guess in, like, a meeting room. So, you know, like, everybody would be funneled to, like, the end of the room. And Elliot would, like, have, like, his little thing over here going on, like they say. And he goes to Gideon's phone during the distraction. And he has 90 seconds to change everything before, like, time runs out. Basically, like, White Rose said, like, you have time. You're running from one deadline to another and stuff like that. And then after, like, he gets, he's, like, logging onto his computer and stuff. Like, Gideon pops up next to him. And, like, he's questioning, like why Elliot wasn't in the room with everyone because Gideon was like, this is the worst thing to have in all safe, like, before anything because when Darlene was doing that little propaganda, she kind of, like, targeted Gideon and that also kind of, like, made people go, like, why is Gideon involved in a way? 
and he's kind of like suspicious of him because he's like when you're not here like things happen and when you are here like things happen but like low-key it's like you're calm you're not you're not freaking out you know so he's kind of like are you part of this and stuff like and that kind of like lends back to the suspicion that the dark army had and why they pulled out because white rose is kind of like if all these suspicions come up like some of us could have gotten caught you know like the plan would have gone through or whatever you know like they would have been screwed over in a way um um evil corp is on the phone ollie comes over and tells gideon like evil corp's on the phone and stuff like go answer it basically and gideon's kind of like ugh, because he still wanted to like i guess interrogate elliot and stuff like that and he leaves him alone then he logs in and he basically says like restore the server to normal and stuff and he emailed like the technician or whatever he's like oh just like you know like remove the honeypot and stuff and i think they said that it'll be like 48 hours to remove it or something like that and he's like you know what it, like it's like when i hacked gideon it's like he finds out and stuff and he reads and analyzes people through hacking them and he's like gideon truly is like a good honest man and stuff and he says that gideon is only the way he is because he's trying to protect his people and then Elliot kind of justifies what he does because he's like, oh, well, I want to protect everyone. Like when he told his therapist, like, oh, I hack everyone. He's like, but I help people, you know, like I don't just hack to have fun. Like he's like, even though like Loki's like spying on you and stuff like that, like invasion of privacy, like he's kind of like, I guess, helping you in a way. Like he tried to tell Angela, like I could have helped you and stuff. But then it's like, mm, is he really or does he just help who he, I guess, loves? I mean, obviously, but in a way you're like, mm, you know, so it's kind of odd to say that. And then this is like, another like weird part in the sense of Tyrell and Mr. Robot in the same car. This I kind of found weird in the sense of when they went to Steel Mountain and Elliot just happened across Tyrell and then when they were having lunch and when he t when Mr. Robot told Elliot to like basically tell Tyrell like you eat here and stuff like that like did they somehow like chance those meetings together like is this all planned like it's like is this all just like a game and Elliot's just being thrown into like random random places and stuff like that but I mean you never know with this series you never know what you're gonna get and Tyrell's telling him like he wants to be evolved and stuff and everything like that and he kind of like says no like he's like you and I are like on different pages you know like right we don't we're not going after the same thing I guess because I feel like Tyrell, like, that distribution of wealth, Tyrell wants to be the 1% of the 1%, because he's kind of like the bottom feeders of the 1% in a way, in the sense of, when he went to the CTO, and the CTO offered him the watch, he's like, oh, it's like, you're gonna have a kid, but this will help cover your mortgage, you know? Like, he was basically giving, like, a charity by the CTO and stuff like that, so kind of, like, hurt his ego and everything, and I feel like if Tyrell were to be in it, he'd want money, you know, like, he wouldn't be in it to help people, he'd be in it to help himself, you know, profit himself, which is the problem that they see already, with, like, Evil Corp and stuff like that, and then he threatens him, Tyrell threatens Mr. Robot, he's like, well, everyone's gonna know about your dirty little secret and stuff like that, like, because he's, like, not agreeing with him, and Mr. Robot's like, don't be petty, you know, he's like, we're not here for pettiness and stuff like that, and then Tyrell, he goes back home, because Mr. Robot was like, just do nothing. He was like, do nothing. Like, that's what you're good at, like, doing nothing. Like, I guess he's, like, still, like, breaking him down. Because Tyrell has, like, a plan that we don't really, like, low-key know. Besides wanting to be CTO in the sense of, like, he still feels like he's achieved nothing. And his Russian bride hoe wife is, like, the one who's always pushing him to do something. And, like, be the best and stuff. And she's always kind of, like, low-key putting him down in a way. And Mr. Robot kind of, I guess, like made him snap again in the same day because it's like just do nothing it's like that's what you're good for in a way and he goes back home and stuff like that and he has like this hysterical like emotion and stuff he starts like kind of talking weird and everything like that and he kind of mentions elliot because he says oh like a month ago he's like i saw this hacker and stuff like that and he mentions how elliot was a shortcut to something greater because he's like oh i thought it was like a simple act of revenge or something he's like but elliot's kind of like I guess the key to a plan and faster because like they could manipulate Elliot in a way and it's kind of true because he got off the morphine with Mr. Robot um he had that little trippy thing and he kind of was like thrown into that hacking 
thing and kind of does basically everything for F society in a way because he kind of is, I guess, the more brighter and smarter one because he was the one who went down on Steel Mountain. He's the one who encountered Tyrell. He's the one who put in the Raspberry Pi. Um, he's the one who got involved with Vera and stuff like that. And Vera kind of reminded us of the Dark Army's White Rose time frame because Vera kept saying, you have until tonight, you have until tonight, you have until tonight. And Elliot was like, you can't do it, you can't do it. But he did. So it's kind of like he had worked under pressure with Vera and then with the White Rose and the Dark Army and like the Steel Mountain stuff, like he is still working under a time frame. So it's kind of like weird how things are similar in a way, but they're always like preparing him for like the real deal. Like it's pr this is practice, even though it's crazy, but it's going to prepare you, Elliot, and stuff like that. So it's kind of weird in that sense and then he's kind of like talking about god because he's like we paid attention to everything in front of us but we don't know what's above us and he's like god it's above us and it's kind of reminding me of lana del rey's money power glory song because it's kind of like uh, like the sun rises i think is the lyrics on those who fail to call and stuff like that and she's kind of like lana del rey is like that's not what this bitch wants because she's like you, you talk about a land that's far away and how are you supposed to get there today with the way we're living and stuff. And it's kind of like Tyrell wanting the BCTO, but it's like, how is he going to get there with the way they're living, you know? Because kind of like that's what the CTO told him. Like, you, like you can't afford stuff, you know, in a way because he's richer than him. And he wants money, power, and I forgot the other word, but it kind of seems like with Mr. Robot, it's money, power, glory in a way. And it's just odd how like you can relate lyrics and kind of music videos and stuff like that into Mr. Robot which I think is really good because Loki like I keep saying Mr. Robot kind of reflects the whole world's problems in a way or society's problems we're here in America you know like with the money and like businesses and stuff like that and CTOs CEOs and big corporations and everything like that and them being evil so it's kind of very it's very interesting of a show and then the police are at the door again and they're going to question them both and stuff like that. And Tyrell kind of like, he's kind of suffocating because he's like really nervous. Like Lady Gaga's telephone, like the fear of suffocation. Like they say, like if you get a call or something, like you just don't know what to say because they're like, oh, like, do you know, like the CTO's wife and like you were there and blah, blah, blah. And he's kind of just like tensing up and stuff with like Mr. Wellick or whatever his last name is. Like, are you okay and stuff? And that, this is, this is the crazy part because his wife's water breaks but not naturally no 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 because at the beginning of the scene she was eating like baby pickles or something with like a weird kind of little fork she broke her own water by poking herself with a fork and that was just another crazy scene like she is really like she is crazy you know because i mean she drank wine while she was pregnant and stuff and she's like into that snm 50 shades of gray stuff but then like, she just, like, low-key, like, I guess almost aborted her own baby, because I don't know, like, how pregnant she is. I don't think we ever found out, really. And that was just, that was crazy. Like, she just stabbed herself with a fork to kind of, like, make a distraction so they wouldn't question him. And basically, she's evil, and then she's like, I won't let them take you, and I won't, like, have you leave us. And then it's kind of weird how she says, I won't let them take you, and I won't let you leave us, because... If you do remember in the first or second episode, when Tyrell said us, he's like, I always do it for us, and us means I. Like, he's very self-centered in that sense. So it was very weird for her to say, you won't leave us. But Tyrell's definition of us is him. Like, for Tyrell, it's just him, and she's just there to Tyrell, but in reality, she is Tyrell. Or Tyrell is she, because she basically calls the shots behind him, like, behind every evil man is an evil woman, you know? So it's kind of just, like, it's weird how she was the one to say, like, you can't leave us, and their definitions are different. And then, um, Darlene and Elliot are at the pier, and I thought this was kind of funny, because it's like, oh, I'm like, is Elliot going to push Darlene off the pier? Is Darlene going to push off Elliot and stuff like that? And so I was just like, what? Like, you know, when they, when they're there. And then he's, yeah, he's like, well, we got like 40 something hours or whatever. And he's like, for no honeypot and blah, blah, blah. And he's just like, your root and stuff. He's like, well, basically, or your hack, you know, like, we'll basically take down Evil Corp and stuff. 
And he's like, we did it. Like, you know, like, it's happening and stuff like that. And I kind of thought that was like a Colby illusion because when Colby was being arrested and stuff, when he was in Times Square, I believe, like, he's kind of singing and then he starts cheering because, like, it's happening, it's happening, it's finally happening. And it's kind of funny to see this coming again because that's kind of how Elliot kind of got thrown into the mix because when he was doing that, like, Tyrell's people called him in. And Tyrell saw him from the very beginning as, like, something to use. But Mr. Robot was smart in the sense that he used him as a shortcut to get to Tyrell, get through the Dark Army, get to Steel Mountain and do this, you know, like, I guess Elliot was very versatile in Mr. Robot's eyes because Mr. Robot knew how to, like, use him, like, I guess, faster and stuff like that. So, that was very, like, crazy. And, um... Oh, she screams for joy, Darlene. She's like, yes, you know, and stuff like that. And then she's like, you should be happy. Like, you did it and stuff like that. And, like, you were the one who, like, basically, like, did this. And then it's kind of like, you changed, like, you changed the world and stuff like that. And Elliot's kind of like, no, like, we did. Like, he's like, it was a group effort and stuff. And he's like, this was all you and stuff. And she's like, I really love you, Elliot. You know, like, stuff like that. This is where I thought it was weird. Because remember how I always say, like, Darlene was basically, like, the Shayla twin hoe or whatever stuff like that and then he kisses her and she freaks out and stuff and this is where that was weird because like when she kissed her I was like oh maybe she doesn't like him and stuff like that you know and you're just like and stuff and then she's kind of freaking out in the sense of like did you forget who I am like again and when she said again I was like I was like it has I was like, okay I was like this is weird because we've never been introduced like this to these characters and you're just like what well, you know like again I was just like I don't think he's ever forgotten like Darlene and he even says, like, you're Darlene, like, you're Darlene. And she's kind of, like, getting a little bit emotional. And then she's like, I'm your sister. And that, that was a big twist again. Like, you're just like, Darlene is his sister. And I was like, okay, I'm like, now it kind of makes sense to why they were talking to each other in ballet, Angela and Darlene. And I was like, wow, this is weird. Because to us, Darlene is just someone... Elia met in F society. But then, Darlene is Elliot's sister. But you're also kind of thinking, okay, maybe that's how she was in his apartment, taking a shower that one time. But then you're also sort of thinking, like, why was Darlene never there? And then you're going to wonder why Mr. Robot wasn't there when going through the morphine addiction and stuff like that. Like, where were they? Like, why is Elliot so, like, messed up like they said and then you're like was this all a lie and stuff like that but then I was like well the family that plays together stays together in this case they're staying together and stuff like that and he he runs away and he starts remembering he's having like a bunch of like crazy like stuff happening and he just keeps saying I'm crazy I'm crazy he's like how could I ever get and stuff like she tried to run away when in third grade and everything like that and blah 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 and, like we slept in the same bed together when like when mom was being cray cray and stuff like that and then He's like, I shouldn't have, like, created us, you know? And when he says created us, it's like, us, the viewers, like, his friend in his mind that he talks to. He's like, I shouldn't have created you and stuff like that. And that was kind of, like, odd because it's kind of like he's having, like, low-key a mental breakdown. But then we're wondering because since she said, did you forget again? It's like, how many times has he, like, forgotten? And, like, does he have dementia? Is he, like, Alzheimer's or something? Does the morphine mess with him, you know? Like, it's kind of weird how stuff happens like that. It's like, I should have listened to Krista and Seven. He's like... Why do I avoid, like, myself and stuff like that? He's like, am I afraid of it? Or whatever. He's like, who am I, you know? He's looking in the mirror and it's, like, flashing between him, Mr. Robot, Angela, and then, like, the F Society mask and stuff like that. And then he's like, okay, like, I need to hack myself, you know? Like, he's like, that's how I know people. That's how I find out the truth about people. That's how I, like, find out the real person, you know? So he hacks himself and stuff and he can't find anything. He's like, there's no, like, there's no Elliot Alderson that is him. No Facebook, no Instagram, no Twitter, no YouTube, no nothing. You know, like, Elliot Alderson doesn't exist, and he's kind of like, am I a ghost? And this is where you start thinking, is Elliot real? Because we're also thinking in the previous episodes, like, is Mr. Robot even real? Is Mr. Robot just a voice in his head that we see as a real person on the show? And this was another twist. Because he's like, did I erase myself and everything like that? And he finds his CD and it's blank and he puts it in and he like logs into it and stuff and we find pictures of Mr. Robot and you're kind of like, hmm, he starts flipping through and starts flipping through. 
you see a little kid on a bike you see i think a little kid like birthday cake or something like that mr robot is elliot's dad i was not expecting that i mean first off the family affair because darlene is his sister mr robot's his dad like what's next you know and that's when everything started to make sense when mr robot told him like you're not alone kiddo like i'm gonna be here when he was having withdrawn he woke up from his nightmare because he's like everyone's gone like i'm alone i'm alone he was like flashing back to like when his dad left him with leukemia and stuff like that but then you're like is this low-key like elliot's real dad because supposedly elliot's dad died of leukemia but then mr robot pushed him out the window as a child and broke his arm but then he pushed him off the pier as a grown-up but then Angela did say, like, oh, like, that's how we know each other. Like, his dad died of leukemia and my mom died of leukemia. So I'm kind of like, is this your robot truly Elliot's dad? I mean, it seems so. It seems very legit. But at the same time, I'm like, huh. And then he gets, like, a family picture of them at the beach. And as far as we know, at the end of this episode, it's him, the mom, Darlene, and Mr. Robot. And I'm kind of thinking, like, so then where is his mom you know like who could his mom be i guess that's what i'm trying to figure out in a way and it was just like this episode is really like mind-blowing and stuff like that so it was really crazy and stuff um there's a knock at the door and it's mr robot and he's like we should talk and stuff and that was just crazy and but then also going back to like when he was having that like one like nightmare or, like freak out during his withdrawals before he woke up and Mr. Robot was kind of like, I'm never leaving you, kiddo. It all made sense when he finds that arrow, error 404 not found when asked, like, can you tell me what happened to this house and stuff? And that shows, like, I guess his mind working as a computer, like, he, he couldn't remember, like, his memory was kind of wiped in a way. Maybe it was the morphine. And that error 404 not found was his life because remember when Shayla showed him the textiles of a home and a family it was kind of like it kind of like tugged at his heartstrings a little and we were wondering like oh why does like Elliot like I guess react the way he does but low-key like in the back of his mind it's because I guess maybe something happened to this happy family like they say because it was like saying like oh like Darlene tried to run away when in third grade and stuff like that and it's like but why you know and then as the episodes progressed, we saw Elliot kind of being abused, like, by his mom emotionally and stuff like that, and a bit physically. So it's kind of, like, it's two big, t like, things that I wasn't expecting and stuff, and this is why I love the show so much. Like, Sam Esdale is, like, he created a living masterpiece of this series and stuff, but I was not expecting those twists. And there's still, like, a bunch of questions, and my head literally, like, hurt from like thinking about this episode so much because I was like because I watch these episodes twice you know I watch it the first time I'm live tweeting you can follow me on Twitter at Gaga's Lil Pedro and then I watch it the second time and I take my notes and stuff and I kind of pay attention a little more and then I go back on Twitter to see what other fans are saying and everything like that in the hashtag and I was like oh my god like you know like things like make sense to you but then at the same time you're like is this truly Elliot's life because I don't know it was weird because I'm pretty sure when he looked at that picture in one of the previous episodes I think it was just him and his mom and I want to say it was the episode before but I could be wrong or it could have been like two episodes before but I know he had looked at that picture before I think he had to wipe the memory and I'm pretty sure it was the same beach picture but it was just him and his mom and it was very weird and then like now it's like a family portrait like pink like they say in her song so, I don't know, it was, a, it was a very, like, weird episode. Like, it was very trippy and stuff like that, but it was a good episode. And I cannot give enough props to Sam Esmail in USA. And the actors, of course, my bae, Rami Malek. Like, this series, like, I've never been so, like, drawn to a series from the very beginning. Like, when I would see previews at the movie theaters and stuff, because, like, it's so mysterious and stuff. But I said I was never drawn into it. And then, like, the storyline and, like, the twists and stuff like that. It's very suspenseful and it's very good. And I, I need a Mr. Robot t-shirt. I was going to buy one, but I didn't. But I need to get one so I can rock it to college. Like this side. And I don't know. I like it. And I hope this show goes on forever. But the season finale is coming. Who knows when season two is going to premiere. Hopefully next summer. Like a little bit earlier in June. But 
this episode is really crazy, you know, white rose, and it's not just a white rose, and like how I thought like the white rose would like symbolize like a death or something. I'm like, hmm. I'm like, maybe there's another death happening. You never know. But I don't know. But this is a really twist, like twisted episode in the sense of like there's so many twists. Like you have the white rose drama, and then you have the Gideon drama, and then you have the Angela drama and stuff like that. And I, it was just, it was crazy. It was cray cray. So I don't know. This episode is really cool. And once again, that was episode eight. And that was 1.7 white rose. So that's my recap on who was Mr. Robot. And I don't know. Just leave your theories and comments down below. Like, rate, share, and subscribe to these videos and stuff like that. And my baby Rami Malik, I want to say hi. So, as always, I want to say hi to Rami Malik. And stay safe and God bless. I'm going to come back with a review, a recap, a fragrance. I don't know. You'll never know what you get when you're a vlog or whatever. But, like I said, hi to Rami Malik. And 